So, hi. One, my makeup is already partially done because I have been filming for the last hour and I thought my camera was recording. It wasn't. And though I said a few videos ago, I don't want to drink on camera often. And I still don't plan to. I felt that it was only appropriate to drink something in a martini glass because there was a lot of martinis in today's video. I'm doing it for authenticity. Even though this is like a soju cocktail, <laughs> it's not even, I don't think I've ever had a martini a day in my life. This is a soku, a soju cocktail with strawberry. And I've had the pineapple one and they're both delicious. And they don't hit me like wine. For some reason, wine hits me really bad. Okay, hi, by the way, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home scale of biscuit and happy Saturday. Saturday is when I do something on my channel called bad movies in a beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. I'm not talking to you Siri, oh my God. But today is a very um, important day, if you will. A day that's been much anticipated certainly, at least in my world amongst me. <laughs> the much anticipated, the much ridiculed, the much uh, talked about, drama about, overly dramatized film that came out yesterday in theaters as of you watching this video. That is Don't Worry Darling, directed by Olivia Wilde with Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. And I saw it Thursday for some reason. I don't know why it was there a day earlier, but um, I watched it and now we're here today and I have opinions as I usually do, cheers. But before we get started, as per usual, I gotta send it over to Adroll Kenny because who else is gonna keep me in canned cocktails, all right? This is delicious, by the way, I highly recommend it. Wow, that's dangerous though. You can't even tell, there's nothing in that. I don't know why looking at it harder made me think I could feel how much alcohol's in it. But sending it away to Adroll Kenny, thank you. Hello everyone, it's Adroll Kenny, and today's video is sponsored by Ritual. Ritual takes the guesswork of trying to figure out what's going on in your multivitamins. With Ritual, you're able to buy a product where you know where each of the ingredients were sourced and you can rest assured that your vitamin is third party tested, non-GMO, vegan, and with no artificial colorants. Basically all the stuff that you don't need. I take the essential for women 18 plus, but they have plenty of them for multivitamins 50 plus, prenatal vitamins, postnatal vitamins, multivitamin for men 18 plus, multivitamin for 50 plus men, uh, essential for teens, essential for kids. They also have uh, protein which I'm actually very interested in, but I haven't tried yet. But the thing that I like most about Ritual is that I'm perfectly okay taking on an empty stomach. I tend to take my multivitamins first thing in the morning because otherwise I will forget. <laughs> but sometimes I'm not hungry first thing in the morning. I don't wanna just eat because I have to take my vitamin. So these are a vitamin that I can take on their own. They're not super huge. You just take two of them. They have like a nice minty uh, flavor and feel, <laughs> if that makes sense, as they go down your body. So they are definitely a good choice if you're like me and find that other multivitamins kind of upset your stomach for some reason. So if you would like to check out Ritual, you can check that out using the link down below. Use code Kenny20 to get 20% off of your first month if you check them out. Big thanks again to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery, baby. Last week here on Bad Movies in a Beat, we talked about a Filipino telenovela by the name of No Other Woman. And oh boy, did that send me into the rabbit hole, honey. I watched at least three more Filipino telenovela movies. Oh no, I watched two. I watched The Unmarried Wife and I watched something called My Amanda. Don't recommend that one. That one just made me mad the whole time. You spend the whole movie, I'm gonna ruin it for you. You spend the whole movie watching two just friends flirt in a really weird way for the whole movie only to never get together and then she dies during childbirth. But as far as No Other Woman, it's a movie that is obviously about another woman and it's messy and it's chaotic and it's poorly made and it's poorly written and I loved every moment of it because I love trash. <laughs> so if you would like to check out that video, it's a longer one. I haven't done a really long one in a while. So if you'd like to check that out, that'll be linked up above or you can check it out in the bad movies and a beat playlist. So yes, the day is finally upon us. We are talking about the much anticipated Don't Worry Darling, starring Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. Hell of a polarizing skill set we got there, don't we? As you guys are probably well aware, this movie, I, and if I'm aware of it, it must have been really reaching all corners of the internet because I never know what the f is going on, which is wild because I'm also very nosy. So, like, I don't know how I'm both, but I'm complicated. Like, I never know what's going on, but I always want to know what's going on. <laughs> This movie has been much discussed, ridiculed even, 
fussed about, overdramatized, because it involves Harry Styles and his fans are very zealous as most like super fandoms tend to be. And now he's in like a, a generally considered respectable film. I don't know if he's acted outside of this, the film that has really gotten a lot of people's attention outside of his fandom, certainly, if that's the case. More so than the film itself, there has been a lot of drama or pseudo drama wrapped around this film that all lead up to its premiere at the Venice Film Festival. That whole shenanigans was bombarding my timeline on Twitter, particularly once they got to the Venice Film Festival. So rumors are surrounding this film, rumors of backstage drama, rumors around possible beef between uh, Olivia Wilde, the director, and some of the actors on set, rumors around a possible spit on someone at the premiere? We'll get to that. Everything around this movie is what seems to be overshadowing the movie itself because as of filming this, the reviews aren't particularly glowing about the film, at least critically. It's a bit early to say as far as moviegoers, but last time I checked, the movie was sitting at around a 38 on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if that's going up or down as of me literally talking right now. There were also clips of Harry's performances, particularly when he had any heightened emotion, which was a little concerning as far as like general quality because they weren't admittedly, especially out of context, they weren't great. So leading up to the movie, I was really interested in seeing the movie just because I like Florence Pugh, <laughs> especially when it's in like the psychological thriller genre, I tend to want to see what she's doing. I don't feel one way or another about Harry. Whenever I feel very neutral and generally apathetic about a very notable person in a film, I think that lends to me being able to kind of look at it a bit more objectively than I think some people can. Cause if you're a big fan of Harry, you may applaud anything he does and and if you hate Harry for whatever reason, you'll say it's shit regardless because he's in it. Um, I don't feel one way or another. I feel incredibly non-committal about any emotion around him. I like that one song, Adore You. Watermelon Sugar is fine if it's playing already, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to play it. That's how I feel about Harry Styles. I also laughed outright when people were calling him the new king of pop. I, that was laughable. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have anything else to say about that. I was like, what? Like, I'm not even gonna give that any energy. It does not deserve it because it's truly laughable. But with that said, I think that kept me as neutral as possible going into the film so that I can just kind of watch it and just either enjoy it or hate it for whatever reason. I will say I didn't really know how to feel going into this movie for a lot of reasons. One, I didn't know one, what the movie was about. Two, whether or not I should expect it to be a complete and utter dumpster fire because again, some of the scenes that it leaked out weren't promising. <laughs> Or see, I could have been walking into something that is being undervalued because of any of the distracting things around the film, the people in the film, what have you, what have you. So I didn't really know what to feel. And so I think that was kind of good that it let me be again, a general neutral party viewing the film. With that said, I do like Florence Pugh. So I tend to maybe be a bit biased towards movies that she's in because she's usually quite good in them. But even that's not gonna make me like a movie that I don't like. <laughs> so I say all that to say, this movie certainly was one. I don't think it was spectacular. I don't think it was groundbreaking. At least I will say with a caveat, I've only seen the movie once because for obvious reasons, being that this movie isn't on streaming, I can't watch it over and over again writing notes while watching it, pausing it, writing notes, stuff like that. I can't go into the theater with my laptop. So this is based off of a singular viewing. But with that singular viewing, I think the movie is fine. <laughs> it's leaning more towards good than it's leaning bad. It's not good enough to be spectacular. It's not bad enough to be fun to watch because it's so bad, which honestly is kind of disappointing because the way that people were kind of talking about it, I thought it would be either peak art cinema, like something crazy, like revolutionary, or it would be the worst thing I've ever seen. And admittedly it was neither. And that's really disappointing. I would have been really drawn to some form of passion if it were either of those things. But even the scenes that were leaked of Harry's performance that were being kind of ridiculed on the internet weren't as bad when they were in context. Even the things that I was kind of expecting to enjoy, again, in either direction, because it was so good or so bad, 
ended up being quite leveled out by the time you actually saw the whole movie in its context. So with that said, I want it to do somewhat of a breakdown of the film, both with spoilers and without. So I'll have timestamps down below so that if you want to avoid spoilers because you plan to go see it, you can do so. Before we get into that, of course, we have to actually talk about the drama. What made this movie such a big deal, at least in the landscape of the internet. <laughs> and I will warn you, if you expected some like truly hot tea, bitch, this is not what that is. This is people that are bored. These are bored people. Cause this is not tea. This is some shit that happens at a UPS every day. Somebody taking credit for some shit that they didn't do. This is not front page entertainment news, bitch, but people are making it into a much bigger deal. Possibly because it's more scrutinized because Harry Styles is in the film and the director is currently dating Harry Styles. But as far as the tea itself, assuming I'm not missing anything, I don't think I am, but if I am, feel free to put those down in the comment section. The tea is not that hot. This is lukewarm, if not even, this is room temp. I'm sorry, I just, can I just sing my praises really quick? I am drinking a cocktail, I am doing my makeup, I'm letting my hair set and I'm doing a movie review at the same time. This, my friends, is a force to be reckoned with. All of this information in regards to the drama has been garnered from a spill sesh here on YouTube. Sure, I could have read an article about it and compiled my own information, but though I am nosy, the only thing that I'm more so is lazy and I didn't feel like doing all that, so. The year is 2020, November 2020 to be exact. And director of Don't Worry Darling, Olivia Wilde, who's also an actress by the way, breaks up with her longtime partner and baby's father, Jason Sudeikis. About three months later, she is seen at a friend's wedding with Harry Styles hand in hand. Presumably they had started dating. Apparently she gets ridiculed quite a bit for leaving her long-term relationship and moving on a bit too fast, especially onto Harry Styles who has hella stands and whatnot. Personally, I don't think that's any of our business, but okay. But yeah, she moved on very quickly and particularly moved on to Harry Styles, who has at that time been announced as the lead to her upcoming movie, Don't Worry Darling. Fast forward to April, 2022, and Sudeikis issues Wilde's custody papers, child custody papers, while she's on stage presenting her film, Don't Worry Darling, at a film festival. That is ghetto. Now me personally, I found this to be incredibly disgusting. I found it gross. And to me, reeks of abuse. So personally, if that was supposed to make him look like a better guy, it didn't in my eyes because that's very icky to do. With that said, Jason Sudeikis swears up and down that he had no knowledge that the company that was gonna issue her papers would do it while she's on stage. I don't believe that. <laughs> I just don't believe that. But sure, maybe it's true. I call bullshit, but I don't know either of these people, so whatever. Now with Olivia Wilde dating Harry Styles and being an ex to Jason Sudeikis, who is, also has his own fan base of sorts, she seems to be public enemy number one of both of these men's fan bases for some reason. Meanwhile, people start to notice that leading lady Florence Pugh hasn't been saying much in regards to the upcoming movie, Don't Worry Darling. And people start to question whether or not she had some reason for doing so. If there was some animosity on set, if she has a problem with Olivia Wilde, if she had a problem with anyone else on set. In an interview, Florence would eventually say that she didn't enjoy that the conversation around her performance and ultimately the film itself had been whittled down to her sex scenes with Harry Styles on screen. How much that ultimately belittled her performance, the character's purpose, the film's purpose, which fair, because that movie, the head on screen was the least consequential thing to happen. I don't, oh my God. But with that said, after this, she still didn't do much press work in regards to the film, saying something along the lines of she had other things on her schedule that she had to focus on that may or may not be true, it's whatever. But it would seem that everything started to go batshit when in an interview with Variety, Wilde would say that the original person that was supposed to play in Harry's role was actually Shia LaBeouf, but she ended up firing him because he contributed to a nasty energy on set, a combative energy on set, and she just didn't appreciate that particular vibe in the workplace and decided that it would be best if he would go. This of course takes place in the midst of FKA Twigs, I believe suing Shia LaBeouf 
for abuse during their relationship. So it is now quite a public knowledge thing that Shia LaBeouf has been abusive in relationships or allegedly abusive in relationships. So it would seem that Wilde was kind of confirming that he does have a belligerent temper even in the workplace. Shia LaBeouf, who is currently on his very predictable white man post abusive redemption arc, uh, sends a very tailored and obviously PR written letter that essentially says, no, I was not fired. He says that he was not fired from the set and that instead he quit, possibly due to tension and discomfort between him and again, leading lady Florence Pugh. He then followed up with a video of Wilde asking him to come back to set, saying that she would ultimately attempt to mitigate their relationship between him and Pugh. I don't know if this actually proves that she's a bad person the way people seem to think it does. <laughs> because at the end of the day, she accused you of having combatant issues on set and then you confirm that you have issues with Florence Pugh. <laughs> so I don't understand what the gotcha is there. I guess the gotcha is that, that despite him having issues with Florence Pugh, allegedly, it didn't stop her from asking him to come back to set, which is fair. That would be something to catch her essentially in a lie. But it also doesn't say that you didn't have a combative relationship with people on set is what I'm getting at. That doesn't make you look better. <laughs> at least in my eyes, it doesn't. But within this video, people would garner that uh, Olivia was kind of talking down to Florence. Um, she refers to her as Miss Flo, which people have seemed to garner that it is, is used in some way derogatory. Again, I haven't watched the whole video, but clips I've seen, I'm still not getting what y'all are talking about. <laughs> like it, did, it just sounded like she was trying to say, hey, y'all don't like each other, I get that. Can we still get this movie made though? Like I will do whatever I need to do to make sure that both of y'all are cool. But yeah, you, people kind of use this as evidence of her being a liar, her presenting herself as more of an upfront pro woman person, but behind the scenes, she's trying to hire an abuser. I could definitely see how that could be extrapolated from this, but I don't think it's in this specific case if that's the argument you have. I think it's more so in the idea of wanting to hire Shia LaBeouf regardless. With that said, I don't know if it was public whether or not that he was abusive prior to them looking into him. This would have been 2020 or 2019 or something like that. So um, it's hard to say, but assuming she knew in some way or another that Shia LaBeouf was abusive and it had gotten to her ears and she hired her anyway, that would be certainly an, an example of her being one way in public and then one way when when it comes to her actual work. But as far as her trying to get someone that she has under contract to come back to set, I don't see how this is particularly evidence of some like grand wrongdoing. Am I missing something? <laughs> you have two actors arguing on set, presumably, or not getting along on set and one decides to quit and you have a movie to make. I could see why someone, especially with all the money involved in making film, would try to at least attempt to coax somebody to come back to set. So yeah, that would be her lying. But I also don't think that would be front page entertainment news, the way people were acting like it was. Okay, sure, Shia LaBeouf wasn't lying about this one thing. Are we really gonna die at the stake to defend Shia LaBeouf though? <laughs> like sure, Shia LaBeouf is incredibly abusive and a terrible person, but like she lied that one time. And it's like, those are not the same, <laughs> babe. Apparently after the video was put out, Olivia said that she tried to get them to work together and mitigate things between him and Florence Pugh. But ultimately he gave her an ultimatum and she chose Florence, hence her understanding of him being fired. I think these are just two people who see the same thing differently, but the same thing happened. The thing that we agree on is that Shia LaBeouf was combative on set, right? Fast forward to the Venice Film Festival and this is where all shit hit the fan. This is when I started to become more aware of the story because it was all over my timeline. This is where uh, they were doing a bunch of press junkets for the film. It was very awkward. Harry Styles looked incredibly out of his element and everyone involved just looked like they were not having a great time. <laughs> which was funny to me, not like newsworthy, but funny. A lot of conversation was starting to happen around maybe what was going on on set that made it this type of environment. Olivia Wilde would say that there was no bad blood on set, nothing that people are trying to make up on the internet. But notably leading lady Florence Pugh was not there for most of it, except for the final viewing of sorts 
of the film. People were hyper analyzing whether or not she was looking at Olivia and whether or not she was looking at Harry. And then a viral debate is, is birthed from a video of Harry Styles allegedly spitting on Chris Pine. <sighs> now we're all allowed to have our opinions on this. Neither of us are Harry Styles or Chris Pine. There's a lot of debate whether or not he did spit or maybe this is just taken out of context and people are reading into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I'm gonna say is this. To me, this is the face of a motherfucker that wants to kill you, but he can't because he's in public. This is the face of a motherfucker that knows that if he were to deck you in the face right now, it would completely overshadow the work that he had put in for a film. Do with that what you will. With that said, I feel like this kind of died essentially because Harry and Chris Pine said, no, there was no spit. Like they would come out and say it when they're trying to promote a movie and don't want to overshadow the movie. But say, hypothetically, of course, Chris Pine were ever to come forth and say, yeah, that mother actually spit on me. It better be ran up. It should be run amok the way that y'all kept going on and on about that Oscar slap. I want people to cry. I want apologies. I want people to have their panties all in a bunch. Also, I want to know why. What's up? This gets to my uh, issue is that people keep talking about how much drama there is around this movie and I'm still waiting for it. The spit is the most drama I've heard thus far. And apparently Florence Pugh's stylist referred to her as Miss Flo on his Instagram in reference to the video that Olivia Wilde made. And I'm like, that's the tea. So the drama excluding Spitgate, because this was going on before we even got there. Jason Sudeikis sucks. Olivia Wilde is dating Harry Styles. Florence Pugh doesn't seem excited to talk about a movie movie. Shia LaBeouf is still a terrible person and there's just like a general off vibe. They didn't get along at work. People don't get along with their co-workers every day. Like what? Right now somewhere there's two people at a Ponderosa fighting but they not on your TL so why should these people be? Somebody give me some actual tea. Did someone get into a physical fight? Did someone do something that's worthy of tea? Ugh. This is the drama by the way. This is it. I was heavily disappointed when I went down this quote unquote rabbit hole. This thing is shallow as f This is a kiddie pool. This is the drama. The spiciest thing is whether or not he spat on him. Where's the mess? This ain't no mess. This is theory. Y'all are just bored. <laughs> like God, is this white people drama? Try being oppressed, babe. You'd have much more to talk about. I can't help but think that this is similar in many ways to the Adam Levine situation going on right now. Like people have made that into a big deal. Like sure, yeah, it, it's making for some great memes. Yeah, rich white man cheats on wife. Like that's not, <laughs> every time you blink your eyes, that's a phenomenon that's taking place. So I don't understand why this, why this matters to us. Like it matters to her, I'm sure, like his wife. Now that we've gotten the quote unquote drama out of the way, I think it's more important to talk about the actual film, which again, in the grand scheme of this non-drama has completely and utterly been overshadowed. So I'm gonna do a bit of a non-spoiler or a no-spoiler review right now. Um, and then afterwards, I'll talk a bit more in depth about the movie, spoiler wise. So if you would like to avoid those, again, there will be timestamps down below. The movie is a psychological thriller about a married couple by the name of Alice and Jack who live in an idyllic 1950s suburban town that is run by a singular company. But when Alice starts to notice that this paradise in which they live is not actually all that it's chucked up to be, her psyche starts to peel at the edges as she tries to break away from this heaven on earth. Um, I think if you watch the trailer, there's no spoiler in saying that the movie has a lot to do in regards to commentary around gender, around the return to idyllic 1950s patriarchy, uh, the nuclear family, the doting wife, the very strict and rigid gender roles, and ultimately how those intrinsically relate and are interwoven with issues of race and whiteness specifically, how that uh, presents itself as its own utopia, I should say. Um, as far as acting performances, Florence Pugh is great. She's usually great. 
She does great. <laughs> Harry is better than I expected, but I didn't expect much. So I don't know if that's a compliment or not. He's inconsistent. That's what I'll give. There's points in which he's doing a great job or again, better than I expected him to do. But then there's times where he kind of shatters and how kind of novice he is around being taken seriously in a film like this shows and it can be quite distracting. And there's even some times where he does a good job, like a legitimately good job, but he's deeply inconsistent. Uh, maybe if he had a bit more experience prior to this, he wouldn't have struggled with that as much, but hey, here we are. But with that said, he's a supporting role. He supports Florence Pugh in her leading role. Um, and I feel like he does that fine. I don't think that he overshadows her in any way, at least not via his performance. I think if you feel one way, again, about Harry Styles, maybe you will be hyper-focused on him. But if you go in neutrally, not really caring one way or another about him as a character, I think he just kind of, he, he serves his purpose. <laughs> He's no more and no less. The visuals are a bit, predictable, but I mean, it's what you would expect from something that is set in the 1950s, but they're done in a very almost surreal way that really helps relay how off kilter this whole kind of idealized utopia is. The pacing's good. I think the movie's a little, maybe a few minutes over two hours. It didn't feel really long. I don't feel like the movie dragged on longer than necessary, which admittedly tends to be an issue with movies of the psychological thriller nature. With that said, if I were asked outright, Kendall, did you like this film? My answer would be yes. I think uh, a lot of its messages have been done before, but better, but I enjoyed the film. I would watch it again willingly. I do wonder maybe I would find more appreciation for it if I had more viewings, like more than one. If you were looking for a truly garbage film, which sometimes I am, or if you were looking for an amazing film, which sometimes I am, I didn't really receive either of those. I, I received a film that was film. So now that we've done the non-spoiler review, I will say adieu, goodbye, for those of you that do not want to have spoilers. Hopefully I would love to see you again after you've seen the movie and we can maybe discuss in the comments more about your thoughts now that you've seen the movie. But for those of you that don't mind spoilers, or don't care enough to go to see the movie itself, this is where the spoilers shall commence. So what we find out in the later half of the movie is that the idyllic 1950s world is not real. It is actually a VR simulation taking place in current day in which a man named Jack has forced his wife, Alice, to be in this test world in which they can return to this idyllic 1950s world. In the present day, Alice is actually a very, very busy and very successful surgeon. And her husband, Jack, is feeling neglected and ignored because she's so busy doing her job. He's also out of work at the time. So in a way her working makes him feel emasculated. And in an effort to return to this, again, idyllic idea of patriarchy, of masculinity, he forces his wife to take part in this experiment in which they live in this world with a bunch of other men who force their wives into this world without their knowledge to play house in this, again, utopia of patriarchy. The first signs that something isn't right is when one of the women of the neighborhood named Margaret, who is notably black, start to have psychotic delusions around the city that they're living in and the neighborhood that they're living in. She's kind of shunned, ostracized by the other women in the neighborhood. They consider her crazy and kind of ignore her. Alice sees her um, commit suicide. When she tries to run after Margaret, she is taken away by men in red jumpsuits who presumably work for the city and therefore work for the company that controls the city. This combined with another scenario in which she had walked out to the headquarters of the company when she's forbidden to do so, gets Alice start to thinking that this place isn't what it seems. After these events, Alice starts to have intrusive thoughts that result in her attempting to take her own life without her knowledge and without her being fully conscious. I think this is a simulation trying to kill her before she can say anything about what's going on or what she suspects is going on. But eventually she ends up being put into inpatient treatment by Jack after she confronts his boss about what exactly is going on 
in the company. Jack eventually admits that yes, he brought her here because she was unhappy as a surgeon, but he says it in a way that is very indicative of him being unhappy that she was a surgeon. You know, I was doing it for you. You were unhappy as a surgeon. And it's like, you took away all of her autonomy entirely. Ultimately, Jack brings her without her consent into this, you know, very rigid, doting wife role. So that allows him to perform in how he believes is his rightful place in masculinity and patriarchy. In this fake world, he is rising up the ranks and she is there just simply as sort of an ornament to him and his success and his place at the company. But once she realizes that that's what's taking place, he tries to kill her by hugging her to death, gripping her waist, and he starts to squeeze her until she can't breathe. So she beats him over the head with his whiskey glass that she gives him every night when he comes home from work. Apparently him dying in this ideal world also kills him in real life. Alice must race to the headquarters in order to break out of the ideal world and return to reality. She's ultimately able to do that, escaping the people in the red jumpsuits that try to catch her along the way. But the movie ends with a black screen and her taking a gasp of air after she leaves the simulation. Of course, very whittled down and with very little clips because again, the movie's in theaters right now. Like I said, the movie's fine. I think the movie's good. There's other movies that have done this conversation around uh, patriarchy and masculinity and ideal femininity and all that stuff better. But uh, the movie is still good, though heavy handed at parts, but still good nonetheless. I think uh, topically, incidentally, being that this movie has so much to do with gender and misogyny and how we talk about women in higher power roles and higher earning roles is so such a focal point, I'd be remiss to ignore some of the things I suspect around misogyny in particular and why people are so heated about everything happening around this movie, it's been very misogynistic. It seems like there's a disproportionate amount of heat on her. I think a lot of people have a lot of hate towards her because she's dating Harry Styles and that has its own, you know, people who are living in a world where they were like, I was definitely up next bitch, you took my space. You live in Idaho. You don't know him. There's a lot of shit about like, why aren't you home with your kids and you're going to concerts with Harry Styles. It's like a bunch of misogynistic bullshit. And I think a lot of people have hyper criticized and hyper scrutinized this movie partially because of misogyny. Again, I don't think it's incredible. I don't think it's like the best movie ever made, but I'm still confused is what I'm getting at. Where all this heat is coming from, where all this vitriol is coming from about this movie. Now I'm open to redacting my opinion if I find out there's more information in regards to why I there is so much scrutiny and so much vitriol towards the movie, towards Olivia Wilde. And maybe along the way, we'll learn more things about what actually happened behind the scenes, but we don't know. So like, where is all this coming from considering we don't have any like concrete knowledge about anything? <laughs> Because if we don't know anything, all this heat is based off of what exactly? So again, feel free to let me know if I'm missing something in regards to the grand lore around this film and the background and all that. But I've checked multiple sources and this is this is what I'm finding. As far as like criticisms I have for the film, the most notable one is one in regards to kind of this very myopic view that the movie has around idyllic femininity. Um, and I don't even know if I can really criticize the movie for that because in the United States, idyllic femininity cannot really be separated from whiteness. And it, and this is a very white movie. And the only non-white people are the ones that are the first to notice. Again, the woman that ends up killing herself is black. Um, the first to notice that something's wrong, which usually is. And the other non-white people that exist kind of exist only because of their proximity to the status quo and ultimately their proximity to whiteness and they don't exist to diverge from that idyllic status quo. But with that said, I don't particularly expect Olivia Wilde to have a whole lot of intimate knowledge on that either. <laughs> so I feel like it's just a criticism more so on how we feel about idyllic gender norms and patriarchy, less so on 
a criticism of her very myopic view of femininity and patriarchy and ultimately misogyny. That's my thoughts on the film. I thought it was something worth watching if you want to watch it. And it took me a very long time to say that. <laughs> so that's all for today, folks. If you like today's video, feel free to like today's video. If you've had the chance to go see the film, I'd love to know what your opinions are, especially if you have more uh, tea on the drama that apparently I'm missing because I don't get it. <laughs> feel free to check out my skincare set with Wish Trend. That'll be linked down below. 45% off if you're wondering what I use to keep my face silky smooth. And follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.